Thank you, gentlemen, for your service and for your appearance. Admiral Richards, I want to speak about the nuclear posture review, which is underway, as is the custom of new administrations. I'm concerned that low-level political appointees, a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense and Deputy Assistant Secretary of State may be subverting the integrity of Secretary Austin's review. Earlier this month, those political appointees gave an interview in Japanese media implying the reduction of funding for our nuclear forces and perhaps even the enactment of a sole purpose nuclear policy. Neither of those appointees, of course, have been confirmed by the United States Senate. Um, were either you or Secretary Austin consulted before they made these public comments? Uh, Senator, no. Uh, no one at STRATCOM was, uh, or myself was consulted. Uh, do you believe that it would be in the best interest of our nation uh, to go to a sole purpose nuclear policy? Uh, Senator, no. Uh, I think, again, that that would uh, remove a level of ambiguity that has had, uh, had useful deterrent value to us. Uh, we have never, as a nation, chosen to do that. And, and that would undermine our ability to deter, for instance, chemical or biological attacks if we used a sole purpose policy? Uh, that we would, by policy, we would not uh, consider a uh, nuclear response to those type of threats. Do you, do you think allies like the United Kingdom or Japan would like the United States to move to a sole purpose policy? Sir, uh, you know, in the end, I'd have to deter to, uh, defer to OSD policy, but my um, indications, conversations is there would be apprehension. It would depend on exactly how we worded it. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. I, I hope the integrity of that nuclear posture review is not subverted by low-level appointees who have never been reviewed by the Senate. I want to move to China. I know you've probably touched on some of these points, but I, I think there's few questions that are more vital today. We know what Russia has. We know the threat Russia poses. They've posed it for 60 or 70 years. Um, but I think China is a menacing and rapidly growing threat, both in terms of the quantity and the quality of their nuclear forces. Um, give us a sense just how fast they're increasing the quantity of their nuclear forces. Senator, I just gave an order at STRATCOM uh, two weeks ago that any threat brief or any brief that is uh, discussing China that is more than a month old must be updated um, with our intelligence folks because it's probably out of date. Um, I can't get through a week right now without finding out something we didn't know about China. Um, and in terms of the quality of these forces, um, it, it's true that they're moving rapidly towards having a functioning nuclear triad just like the United States and Russia, which is to say bombers, submarines, and missiles. Is that right? Senator, that's correct. And um, on, on those ground-based forces, uh, in some ways their quality is more survivable and less detectable than ours since they're moving towards, say, um, solid fueled rockets, which give you less warning since you don't have to stand up the missiles and fuel them with liquid fuel, or road mobile and rail mobile missiles, which can be moved around in the back of a tractor trailer or a train, something this country doesn't use. Is that right? Senator, that's correct. The uh, road mobiles of both uh, Russia and China are uh, uh, challenges to make sure that you can maintain accountability of them. Hard to find a tractor trailer with a missile on it in a country the size of China, which is as big as the United States, right? Uh, and both countries are very good at hiding them. Um, and and you, you spoke something a few moments ago, I just want to point out that you said that eliminating our uh, ground-based missiles would be one of the best things that, China could, that could happen to Chinese planners. Um, and is that because the number of our missile systems complicate their targeting? Senator, that's correct. He would solve a problem right now that they don't have an answer to. Which is to use a colloquial term, the missile sink. Uh, with all of our, I know you may not like to use that term, but with all of those missiles that we have out in the Midwest and the Rocky Mountain states, uh, just the sheer quantity of targeted sites, if you're Russia or China, is very complicated to hit. It certainly requires a scale of attack that is, uh, uh, makes it uh, very obvious what's going on. And part of why I don't like the term missile sink is there's a lot of things where we have forgotten how we got here. An example is long, um, bolt out of the blue, right? Highly improbable. We all agree with that. We would be the first to tell you that. We look at this risk every day. But we forget why it's improbable, right? We made it improbable as a nation. We invented the ballistic missile submarine. We invented launch under warning, launch under attack. It's improbable because it probably won't work. Um, if you, we can easily take steps to make it more probable if we forget what it is that got us here. That's right. 
And, and that would be the case, not just if you took the radical step of eliminating an entire leg of our triad, the ground-based missiles, but even if you substantially reduce the number of ground-based missiles, is that correct? Senator, fundamentally, I gotta have enough capacity, right? And I'm now about to face an additive threat from China. Uh, these numbers that we have were based on a, a threat situation from years ago. So I'm apprehensive right now. Uh, well. I, I certainly need everything that's in the program of record if you want me to do what the president ordered me to. So I'll just conclude uh, with a point I often make. Um, we hear from some misguided and uh, misinformed people on the left who might want to eliminate a leg of our triad or eliminate the entire nuclear forces, this fanciful idea that somehow we can rid the world of this weapon system. Um, it's often said we spend so much on weapons we never use. Um, to the contrary, we spend very little on these nuclear forces as a percentage of our defense budget, certainly as a percentage of our overall economy. Uh, and second, we use them every single day, and we have used them every single day for 76 years to deter another war like the terrible wars of the first half of the 20th century. Thank you, Senator Cotton.